Can the God of Thunder stop the robot uprising? And for you KISS fans, we're not talking about Gene Simmons. They're not real, but they're spectacular. Yeah, we mean what you think we mean. Did a possible summer sleeper rip off a John Hughes 80s classic? Who will win this week? The studio crew? You? Kurt? We've got brand new trivia. And we've got a con report. And Slice of Sci-Fi reacts to the tragic events in Aurora, Colorado. We hope you'll join us for today's installment of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Hola y saludos a todos. que que SliceofSciFi.com And greetings, everyone, to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Armenenge. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Tim Adamick. I'm Noah Richman. And I'm Tim's son, Joe Adamick. <gasps> oh, wow. Tim Spawn in the house. Indeed. Wow. <laughs> and we got studio audience. It's, it's We have crazy. quite the studio audience. It's tonight. fantastic. I love it. You know what? I bet you they're waiting for some news, though. You mm-hmm. think so? Okay. Let's go. And now the news. <laughs> I just want to say right off the bat, I love Leonard Nimoy. He's awesome. Yes. Oh, my God. No Is friend but. So when Emmy nominations were announced, once again, Fringe was uh, overlooked. Yeah. Theme. Yeah. Imagine that. And it's just, it's horrible. Well, many of us have resigned ourselves to the fact that, uh, you know, the marvelous work of the series has been and will continue to be overlooked. One of those involved in the show is called the Emmys out on the snub. <laughs> nice. On Twitter, Leonard Nimoy said, no Emmy nomination for Fringe. Ridiculous. So much talent. So much hard work. So much imagination. LLAP, he added. I shouldn't be surprised about uh, Fringe. The Emmy has given a short shrift to, of course, Star Trek for 46 years. Amazing LLAP. LLAP. Uh, Llamas like <laughs> ashless people? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that's what he means. Yes, uh, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. He's so, fantastic. Anyways, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and it's true. Uh, John Noble, really, seriously? Oh, yeah. Uh, right? Absolutely. What? I mean, there's right. so much talent on that show, and it just shows that, I mean, sci fi and genre is just always getting snub in, in mainstream. Even though it is so mainstream now, right? And I mean, not just John Noble, Anna Tor of Hello. She yes. had to like have Leonard Nimoy inside of her for an episode. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello, yeah. that was wow. brilliant. And, and it, what's kind of wrong, actually? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not if you're Leonard Nimoy. Well, that's true. So. And, and if, if the writing on Fringe isn't going to get an Emmy, what what genre yeah. is? Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, if the billions of dollars that the movies aren't making isn't enough to at least change that a little bit, I mean, jeez. Nah, nah, nah. You got whatever. My, Money does not equal accolades. I know. When we heard that Steven Spielberg was on board to direct the big screen version of Daniel H. Wilson's Robopocalypse, we were intrigued. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Spielberg is working on pre-production for the project, including getting 20th Century Fox to pony up a bit more budget for the film. And he's looking to Thor himself to help stop the robot uprising. Really? Yes. According to Deadline, Spielberg wants Chris Hemsworth to take the lead role in the film. I'm all for it. I do, too. I think that's good. I'm I'm down with that. I mean, Chris Hemsworth is obviously proven his worth as an actor. You know, I mean, put put him some cash and do it. Why not? I've heard nothing about this story is the book is awesome i have no idea it's very good i've i've read it Mm. um tim pick it up Uh, my 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 type of book your type book all righty then writers robert orkey and alex kurtzman are joining forces with underworld director len weissman to bring a new look on a sleepy hollow to our great television screens that's what's going to be slightly different really they will serve as executive producers for a new project called sleepy hollow oh wow Wow. original Original. title how awesome uh, Orkey and Kurtzman will script the project uh, with co-writer Philip Icecove, uh, who came up with the idea, and Weissman will direct the pilot. The show will be a modern-day reimagining of the classic Washington Irving legend. Now, doesn't that sound like normal anywhere? We're reimagining, we're modernizing all our fairy tales or mm. whatnot. So, um, And uh, it will feature Ichabod Crane teaming up with a female local sheriff to solve all manner of mysteries in their town. Really? Yes, the series will be part yes, of Yes, because the- a female, lo- uh, female sheriff was so common around the time well, of Grimm's no, fairy tales. I, I think it's, yeah. it's, it's going to modern? be modern day. That's why yeah. they're doing it. So yes, That's why it's a reimagining. Yeah, the series will be part of a development cycle for the 2013-2014 uh, season. While the network isn't attached to it yet, of course, you can bet that the interest based on big names will be involved. So I'm wondering if Siffy's going to get the... 
I don't know, but hilariously, there is also a Sleepy Hollow project in the works for CW. I was uh, actually, I was going to say the CW would probably pick this up. But there's a separate one that they're working. I don't know if it's as far along, wow. but um, yeah. So, so you know how it happens: one person has an idea, two people. It's, there's frequently right. yeah. competing developing projects going on. Right? Is anybody besides me skeptical about how that story would work as a series? Yes. Well, yes. You know, yeah. it, it depends. If you actually go through the Sleepy Hollow thing, I think you could get a mini series or maybe like a, a ten episode out of it but, but I not a full yeah. on yeah otherwise well, yeah well anyway hey let's let's take a quick break come back because we got lots of great news okie dokie you know what I think I think you forgot to lock your door a lot of people do that they forget that's too bad because all crime needs is a chance don't give it the chance it's my job to teach you to protect yourselves. Make it your job to learn. Write the box 6600 Rockville, Maryland. Oh, and one more thing. Lock your door and take a bite out of crime. Your news team is next. Oh, I love McCruff. Right? <laughs> That's awesome. Take a bite out of crime. So while the premise behind Ruby Sparks may sound similar to the 80s comedy Weird Science, writer and star Zoe Kazan and co-directors Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris insist it's just a coincidence. Really? Yes. Yes. Kazan says the myth of Pygmalion inspired her to write the story of a writer who brings his dream woman to life. Kazan tells io9 that she doesn't see the comparisons to science as valid when you view both films. Unlike science, Ruby is created by Calvin unintentionally because his need for her is so great. And if he set out on purpose to create somebody he could control completely, then he would be a sociopath. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Okay. okay. Uh, Kazan adds that Calvin only begins to try to control the relationship when he feels like he's losing her and that the script looks at the crazy things we will do for love. Uh, you know, that still sounds kind of sociopathic. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Dayton, yes. yeah. Sounds like weird science to me, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know. It was an accident there, too. Yep. Um, Dayton tells io9 that he sees the film more as, oh, yay, a romantic comedy that yes. just deconstructs the oh idea of the perfect woman he acknowledges that weird science also does that but he added that so do a lot of other romantic comedies like what women want but weird science had a missile yes well there's always and it had chet yes Yes. (laughs) so there you go bill paxton wins we thought of it as a genre bending film says dayton i like romantic comedies good ones are hard to find but when they work it's a really pleasing form but this clearly was something different, and we liked that it went to a darker place, and that it also explored very real things that happened between people, even though the concept was somewhat fantastic. Hmm. Sounds like it's right up Brett's alley. And hmm. mine, too. Brett and I will go hold hands in the movie theater. <laughs> there you <so>. go. <laughs> <laughs> At the recent San Diego Comic-Con, actress Caitlin Lieb from the upcoming Total Recall was on hand to promote the upcoming summer blockbuster. If you've not seen pictures, folks, let me tell you. <laughs> Lieb is taking the role, of course, the three-breasted woman, and she's there in character. If you've not seen pictures, like I said, really? go check it out. <laughs> The prosthetic third breast was so realistic that fans kept asking if if it was hers, if it was real, oh, or not. Yes. For crying out loud. No, really? it looks really good. I mean, eventually causing the actress to have to confirm that the third breast is just movie magic. It looks really realistic. It really does. Wow. There are a bunch of people at Comic-Con, she said, asking if I had surgery for the third one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That's for a, a, role. a little over and above the yeah. Call of Duty there, folks. Uh, others <laughs> thought that the, that the two on the side were real uh, instead of just the one on the side. That's the thing. I guess there's one thing that bothers me the most is that they think I'm out there prancing around Comic-Con with my breasts out. <laughs> they really are not mine. She tells the Calgary Herald. Can I say, as someone who's been booth bait at conventions like Comic Con before, you'd be amazed what people say and think at these things. Yeah. It's abs. I'm sure it's 100 percent true what she's saying. But, uh, okay, so based on everything that you just said, yes, I'm counting five. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of curious what was involved with proving that they were fake. I don't think she, I, if I were her, I wouldn't. No, I don't think so either. I think she kind of <laughs> said... You have to take my word for it. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's what it was. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. so, I mean, otherwise you're either flashing your real boobs or um, someone's fondling your fake ones. Either way, creepy. Yeah, creepy. Either way you go about it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. NBC is jumping into the vampire craze with a new series based on Bram Stoker's original vampire, Dracula. According to The Hollywood Reporter, NBC has given the green light to a 10-episode drama series starring the Tudors' Jonathan Rhys Myers in the lead role. 
Yeah. Really? Yeah. Alrighty then. Hopefully there, I'm sure there's going to be no sparkles there. The series, which <laughs> bypassed the traditional pilot stage, that's the interesting part, no pilot, no pilot? takes place in the 1890s huh. and finds Dracula living a double life in London as an American businessman interested in bringing modern science to Victorian society. His true plan to exact revenge on those who thwarted what? him centuries ago, however, what? is derailed when he falls in love with a woman who resembles his long lost love. But, what? Yeah. I, That's where they lose me. It wow. sounds like a train I wreck. Halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, er, wow. Okay. Yeah. The right. new series was announced by NBC head Robert Greenblatt at the Television Critics Associated meetings yesterday. In the world of Twilight and True Blood and all the contemporized stories, we thought we'd go back to the original and change uh, it to be uh, almost unrecognizable. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that last part was me. Yeah, I know. He so. told reporters Tuesday at TCA, noting that the series would stay true to the time period, but look towards the future. Wow. Uh, Hot wow. mess. Hot this, mess. This is my Hot. skeptical face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so DreamWorks uh, is going crazy, you know. So where's Waldo? He's with DreamWorks now, folks, by really? the way. Yes, along with He-Man and Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> yeah, the, the characters in their uh, universes were part of the DreamWorks acquisition of Classic Media for $155 million, wow. folks. Wow. Classic Media was founded by Eric Ed, uh, Ellenbogen, formerly Marvel Entertainment, and John Engelman in 2000 with the aim of acquiring characters that had been forgotten or poorly promoted. The pair will remain in charge of the newly branded DreamWorks Classics division, that's what they're calling it. He-Man, Cast of Friendly Ghosts, Lassie, and Fat Albert are included in the 450 titles in the portfolio. That's so I, I'm trying to think about a Where's Waldo movie. Oh, wait, well, here's, here's all I can of come up with is two and a half hours of landscape shots with exactly. the credits <laughs> rolling with a guy in a striped suit. No, it's going to be not? it's going to be gritty uh, sniper flick. <laughs> yeah, like total total spy thing. Yeah. Like Waldo uh, has important information that's going to well, save the oh world. Oh my god, it's trying that. to stop him. It's it's Where's Shooter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's lots of other ones. There's Postman Pad, Basil Brush, Where's Waldo, Wally, Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nose, Blah 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 blah. And so on. Anyways, obviously DreamWorks is going to be producing wow. lots of them on these Holy these characters. So just keep an eye out. They're going to be deluging in. Okay. One last little bit, and then we have uh, something special. On Friday, July 20th, fans in Aurora, Colorado, gathered for the midnight screening of The Dark Rises. <sighs> Mm. As our audience is aware, during this screening, a gunman opened fire in the crowded theater, killing 12 and injuring many, many more. The alleged perpetrator of these hor- horrific crimes is now in custody, awaiting his day in court to answer the charges against him. Given the nature of how Slice of Sci-Fi records, we don't have the most up-to-date details on this developing story, but we are covering it in our news feed. However, when something this big happens in our world, the Slice of Sci-Fi team feels we would be remiss to ignore it and not include coverage in our shows. In response to these tragic events, we're going to break with our traditional news format for this show and offer this editorial that we cross-posted to the Slice of Sci-Fi news feed. One of the virtues of the science fiction and fantasy genre is its ability to inspire. In the 1950s and 60s, science fiction inspired humanity's race to the moon. Countless scientists have cited the works of Gene Roddenberry, Robert Heinlein, Jules Verne, and Isaac Asimov as the inspiration to not only study science, but to make it a lifelong career goal, to make those life-changing technological marvels those men and women dreamed up a reality for us all. Many times we look back and see which once seemed impossible being made into reality, because and we have the giants and not-so-giants of our genre to thank for the inspiration to push us higher, and to accept no less than the best that humanity has to offer. But it's not just the technology that inspires us in this genre, it's also the characters who inhabit those universes. Our genre has served as an instrument for social change, and it's given us characters we identify with, that we love, and oftentimes go to extreme lengths to emulate. Attend any convention, genre movie opening, a book release, and you'll see every fashion from the standard tie-in t-shirt to the full-blown cosplay outfit on display. Some spend moments deciding which genre shirt they want to wear that day, while others may spend hours, months, or even years creating that virtually flawless outfit that emulates the costume of a favorite superhero, the look of a favorite anime character, or the outfit worn by a favorite character in a genre show, movie, or novel. But as with all things, there's a dark side when that inspiration can go too far. In the wake of the tragic events in Aurora, Colorado, many of us have been left wondering just where does a person go from donning a cape and a cowl to dress up as Batman before high, for a highly anticipated movie premiere, who's collecting an arsenal of weapons and targeting a packed movie theater 
on a late Friday night screening? How can a genre that inspires the best humanity has to offer also inspire some of the most despicable and horrifying examples of humanity as well? We here at Slice of Sci-Fi wish to extend our thoughts, prayers, and tears to all those directly impacted by the events in Aurora, Colorado last week. We also extend our prayers, our thoughts, and a listening ear and forum to everyone in the United States and the world who is struggling and grieving in the wake of the attack during the premiere of The Dark Knight Rises. We would like to open a dialogue for fans as we struggle to come to grips with the world-changing and shattering events of Friday, July 20th. What was supposed to be a day to celebrate one of the most anticipated movies of the year has become something darker and something even more unsettling for many of us. We hope this forum will rise above the partisan politics that will surely be endlessly debated in the wake of these events. As other media outlets offer experts and debate the roles of weapons control, the MPAA, and society as a whole in the wake of this horrific tragedy, we hope that the slice of sci-fi community and the genre community as a whole will find a safe harbor in a storm here, a place of debate, healing, tears, and closure. And while it's dark now, we hope that we, together, can just rediscover that our genre can inspire some of the worst in humanity, but it also still has the ability to inspire the best in humanity as well. We encourage our readers, listeners, and friends to take this chance to respond to these events in a mature fashion, respecting the views of everyone and being sensitive to each other. You can leave your comments on this article at Slice of Sci-Fi, where it's been cross-posted, or you can call our feedback line at 206-339-8735 to join the conversation. The floor is open. Uh, very poignant words. That was Michael Hickerson, for those yes. of you that don't mm-hmm. know our news director. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, um, well stated. Very yeah. very nice. And uh, we all uh, pretty much uh, gave it our thumbs up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, kind of odd to jump from that to <laughs> trivia, but... <You> <laughs> yeah. It's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. Uh, we have to move on. It's uh, time to do some trivia. <laughs> Put on your thinking caps, kids, and play along with the gang. Hey, it's trivia time! Well, hello, Slicers. Curtin St. George here on this week's Slice of Trivia. It's about time. It's about space. About two men in the strangest place. It's about time. It's about flight. Traveling faster than the speed of light. Yes, it's all about time (laughs) travel. Something we haven't touched on in a while. By the way, that clip is a theme song from a TV show that was all about time travel. Not a very good one. Here comes (laughs) the first clip. This, this one's ringing. Right. So the one your double has in Russellville can't be. Right, I think we broke symmetry. Ooh, uh, wow. Uh, I got nothing. Any clue? Here's the longer version. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I forgot it was in my pocket. It's Kara. Yeah. How do cell phones work? If there's two duplicate phones and I call the same number, do they both ring at the same time, or is there... That's well, yeah, they both ring. It's, it's a radio signal. No, so. it's a network. The network... The network checks each area. Is that going to be like stops ringing. It only hot rings tub the first time one. machine or something like this, that? This one's ringing. Nah. Right. It doesn't sound wacky enough. So the enough. one your double has in Russellville can't be. Right, I think we broke symmetry. Are you sure that's how cell phones work? No. Wow. A studio full of people and we're stumped. <laughs> no clue. Not that was Shane clue. Carruth and David Sullivan in Primer from 2004. That wow. disc is wow. sitting at really home next to my thoughtful PS3. Science fiction I haven't watched film. it yet. It can Damn be it. more than a bit... Slow. <laughs> yeah. Here's our next clip. I have a very important message for you from the future. You're from the future? That's right. Now listen. What happened to you? The future must be awful. Oh, that's. I'm. I. I, I want to say Animaniacs, yes, but I'm I don't think so. Throwing a big curveball at you with this one. Here's the longer version. I can't. Twilight, I can't participate because I can me. see the image. Who are you? I mean, you're me, but I'm me too. How can there be two me's? It's not scientifically possible. You are not scientifically possible. My little pony's friendship is magic. Twilight, please. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, from the but I can't pin it down. You're from the future? That's right. Now listen. What happened to you? The future must be awful. Please, I don't have much time. Is there some sort of Drawn epic together? Holy war in the distant future or oh, something? Oh, it could Actually, be. I'm from next Tuesday morning. Yeah. Right, if it's dot, yeah. Yep, that's dot. You're right. Nope. 
Yeah. In no. the land of Equestria, Princess Celestia's apprentice, oh Twilight Oh my god. Is sent to Ponyville oh, to yes, learn about were. the really? importance Seriously? of friendship. <laughs> no was Tara way. As Twilight Sparkle yes. in My Sparkle. Little Pony, Friendship is <laughs> wow. Magic. The episode was It's About Time, okay, maybe which just debuted March yeah, 20th you know. of this year, 2012. Brony, and that was for surprised. all the bronies exactly. out there who requested I include something nice. from My Little Pony. Oh, wow. So ready, here comes our <laughs> final adventure in time. How long will they keep us here? I don't know. You are here. You have always been here. And you will always, always be, be here. here. I know it. Is he trying to blow my mind? Oh, I know it. I <laughs> can't for the life of me think of the... Uh, Holy the crap, we suck. Version. What's it like up here? Well, I don't know because we can't leave the dome. The atmosphere oh. of Tralfamador is cyanide. It would be fatal to you if you left the dome. This is it? It's, um, Straight so. Logan's run? Oh, no, no, it's, um, I um I I don't know. You are here. You have always been uh, here. Zardoz. I don't think it's Zardoz. Be. No, it's not Zardoz. It's not Barbarella, is it? No, it's is he not trying Barbarella. trying to blow my mind? She doesn't time travel, does she? No, no it, it might be. makes sense in a way. Yeah. You see in travel. Would you please yeah. mate now? Oh, man. Would you please mate? Oh, damn it. Maybe it is. I know. It was a lovely Valerie Perrine as Montana Wild Hack and Michael Sachs as Billy Pilgrim in Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse oh. Five. Wow. 1972. I can't say that I'm a we big Vonnegut fan myself, shame. but the movie stayed yes, fairly close, close to the, the novel. Book, yeah. Well, that's all for right. time travel trivia. Wow, you we suck. Clips or the ideas only one we got like was My Little Pony. <laughs> and that was Brian. Brian. <laughs> <Gmail .com. laughs> oh my God. I rock. Brian. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> my brony. Terrifying. <laughs> you know. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and be back with more after <laughs> this. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And now, this week's con report. Go get your geek on at a con. Hi there, folks. Well, we're in the heat of midsummer, and that means just one thing. That's right, Shore Leave, the annual fandom tradition, is coming around upon us once again. Shore Leave 34 is going to be at the gorgeous Hunt Valley Inn on Shawan Road, just off of I-83, just north of Baltimore, Maryland, on the weekend of August 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2012. This year's special guests include Kate Mulgrew, that's right, Captain Janeway herself is coming to Baltimore, LeVar Burton, Jory LaForge himself from Star Trek The Next Generation, here to celebrate the 25th anniversary of that wonderful show with us at Shore Leave Weekend. Other special guests include Ryan Robbins from Sanctuary and several other noted genre shows, Thomas Decker from the very popular Sarah Connor Chronicles, the lovely and talented character actress Musetta Vander, the famous uh, singer from the 80s girl band, The Go-Go's, and current voiceover artist, Jane Whelan, will be joining us. And from the very popular Star Trek Internet series, Star Trek Continues, Mr. Vic Mignogna is a recent addition to our guest list this year. Plus, we'll have lots of noted science fiction fantasy authors and local scientists who will give special talks about the latest in the world of science fact. Basically, Shore Leave can be considered a three-day party with a couple thousand of your closest friends that you may or may not know you even had. And that is Shore Leave. That's I tell you what, it's awesome. going to be yeah. amazing. We've been running quite uh, several promos on that. So mm -hmm. if you're in the area, definitely go, to it. go pick it up. It's, and then uh, call us and tell us how it was. Absolutely, absolutely. So... All right, just a few minutes left here. Did we have uh, any we stories else? we didn't hit? No, but do we want to talk about the Eureka finale? We do <clears throat> want to talk about the Eureka finale because, damn. It was good. It was good. It was a very bittersweet but fantastic wrap-up, I thought. It was a little little misty. It was a yeah. little, little yeah. cheery. Yeah, it was. It really was. I mean, it was, it was kind of hard not to get choked up on that one. I was really... Nah. It was nice character moments for everybody. Uh -huh. You know, they did a real... It was a classy send-off, I thought, for that show. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And it leaves the door open. Open, of course, which is well, really well. You know, right? Jamie. Yeah. Jamie said that one of the last times we talked to him was right. you know this this ended in a way that we can come back and do movies and mm -hmm. yada yada yada. 
So I, I have not seen it yet, and so I don't care if you spoil it or whatever, but he said he was really satisfied with it. Yes, mm-hmm. I can see do, why. Do you yeah. think so? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I think he did a beautiful job of wrapping it up, and I, I'm not sure that I wanted that show to end any other way. I mean, it, it, it did right. a very nice job of of tying up a lot of characters and still give us something interesting. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just a soppy clip show, you yeah. know? It was. Uh, it, it actually had something going on in there where you went... Uh, Damn, I'm gonna miss this show. Well, the one clip was really was really Carter's life flashing before. Yes. His exactly, yes. exactly. And and that was really it. And then that was all she wrote. So yeah, I mean, I tell you what, it was really good stuff. And if you have not seen it, can't wait to go see it. Yep, it's definitely. really worth it. That's gonna do it for this show. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, we will have more, of course, in a couple days. Uh, you can call the numbers two zero six three three nine Trek. That's two zero six three three nine eight seven three five. If you would like to comment on our comments or you have something to uh basically say about the uh the the tragedy that happened uh, mm-hmm. we're definitely going to be doing some stuff on that this week so thanks everyone see you soon mm-hmm.